Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. So I've labeled this video uh, to Gry Victorious. So I guess the question would be, why uh, would I do that with uh, the Anaconda strategy, uh, for the most part, still still in effect and uh, ongoing, and, and, and still to this day, uh, applying crippling, crippling, lethal uh, sanctions against the Tigray re region, and I and I think the word the word sanction is incorrect. And again, uh, I would it would be more of a, of a siege and or an embargo, a a war strategy that was implemented by the uh, the Abi Ahmed regime. And again. It, it's still present. Uh, obviously, things seem to be uh, at least changing right now, both politically uh, and, I think, uh, at the same time, more importantly, uh, militarily on the ground. So we've heard about uh, the possibility that uh, certain uh, higher-up leadership officials within the Prosperity Party, within the Abiy Ahmed regime, specifically Abiy Ahmed himself, himself uh, has uh, started conversations with the uh, Tigray regional leadership. And uh, it would appear that he is entering entering negotiations not with strength, but with defeat. And I'll try to explain that. So as we know, the, uh, the Abi loyalist formations the Ethiopian National Defense Forces, those federal forces allied with the Prosperity Party, along with Isaiah Safwarki of Eritrea and the Eritrean military, launched this massive invasion, which they called a law enforcement operation, into the Tigray region, again, signified in the area of green, and then obviously the area over here as well uh, is part of the Tigray region. And this operation uh, lasted uh, well over a year in which uh, most uh, areas of the Tigray region, with the except for the central Tenbian region, was occupied by the joint forces of the uh, beat loyalist uh, military and, again, the Eritrean army. And after a prolonged conflict, those forces were evicted from the Tigray region. They suffered a battlefield defeat, a cataclysmic battlefield defeat, in fact. And then that followed on by a major operation by the Tigrayan Defense Forces into uh, the Amhara region uh, at one point threatening uh, Addis Ababa and, and thereby inflicting monolithic casualties on the Abi loyalists' formation. So here we sit today with a, uh, a, a massive uh, insurgency by uh, the Oromo Liberation Army. And it would appear uh, at this time that again, one of the main reasons for Abiyah Ahmed's uh, outreach towards uh, the Tigray region in terms of looking to stop hostilities is because of the setbacks that it is seeing in within the conflict uh, that is taking place inside of the Aromia region. And again, uh, after uh, the uh, the dismal performance of the uh, ENDF or the B loyalist formations that took place both in the Tigray region and in the defense of uh, large areas of the Amhara region, it has broken the back of the B loyalist army. Again, he, obviously, he still maintains, meaning he, Abiy Ahmed, still maintains regime security forces, such as the Republican Guard, such as uh, regime intelligence services and, and certain uh, elements of the federal police forces, and then obviously elements of the army as well. But it is not the same army that originally entered the Tigray region well over a year ago. That army no longer exists, as it was defeated in the Tigray region. And now, again, we're, we're seeing widespread fighting taking place in the Aromia region. Uh, we're seeing uh, more and more success by the Aromo Liberation Army. We're seeing the Aromo Liberation Army continuing to expand and control areas in Aromia. And uh, at this point, uh, I would say that uh, Abiy Ahmed is looking at, at what is happening 
and uh, believes quite possibly that if that if the Tigray Defense Forces were to launch another operation into the Amhara region with the focus on quite possibly moving towards Addis Ababa, it quite possibly could do that. Meaning the TDF quite possibly could end up taking control of, uh, of Addis. And obviously, uh, given the nature of the world, given the state of the world right now, with a lot of eyes on what is happening in Ukraine, uh, prior before that, prior before the, the, the Ukrainian war with Russia, there was a lot of concern about the TDF uh, moving into Addis Ababa. And I would say at this point, if, if that were to happen again, there probably would not be as many eyes. And, and again, there's probably not going to be as much military support to a BMED, given a lot of this equipment is, is, is now needed, such as uh, precision-guided munitions. Some of the drones are now needed to support the Ukrainian war effort. And I think that's what a BMED is looking at. And uh, he has his hands full with the Aroma Liberation Army. We could quite possibly see, at some point, an OLA victory in Aromia. We could, at some point, see the Aromo Liberation Army march into Addis Ababa. Now, would they be victorious? Again, very difficult to say at this point. But again, the threat posed by the OLA right now in terms of the threat that it poses towards the Abiyamed regime is much, much greater than what it posed, what what uh, it could do to the Abiyamed regime prior to the conflict that took place inside of the Tigray region. The back of the uh, Abi loyalist army was broken, uh, probably in between Debre Burhan and uh, Weldia. And the course of the fighting that took place in between those uh, those two cities, and uh, right now uh, you can see uh, the fragmentation of some of those uh, allied forces, such as the forces within the Amhara region. We're now seeing infighting between Fano and uh, Amhara regional forces and the uh, centralized government, uh, the uh, the city-state government of uh, Addis Ababa, led by the Abi Ahmed regime. We're seeing uh, not only that, but we're also seeing concerns from Viamed himself about uh, some elements of his own armed forces. And again, in terms of a possible rebellion and or coup d'etat. And we're, we're starting to see, again, and we've, we've seen this for quite some time now, where Viamed is installing regime security to keep himself in power. And that could be more of a concern, obviously, right now than what's taking place uh, in many parts of the Aromia region. A lot of areas within the Aromia region are completely lost to a Ahmed and his regime. And uh, they may not have the capability to get back some of these areas, to, to reconquer, to retake these areas that have been lost to the Aromo Liberation Army. And uh, again, that's probably why we're seeing some of the outreach right now, some of the discussions taking place between Abiy Ahmed and uh, certain uh, high-level uh, leadership within the uh, Tigray region. Uh, I would say at this point, Abiy Ahmed is probably very, very concerned on what a actions and or activities the uh, TDF could possibly take. And again, uh, I, I truly believe that... Uh, the Abi Ahmed regime is very, very tenuous at this point. And again, uh, the military capability that existed a year ago is much different than what exists right now in terms of uh, both the strength of the OLA and the reduced capacity of the actual Abi loyalist formations. And uh, I would anticipate at some point we will, again, as I've talked about this before, we will probably see a move by the TDF into Western Tigray. And again, I think at some point in the not too distant future, it could be a year from now, it could be months from now, it could be it could be multiple years from now. But eventually, eventually, I foresee at least that the TDF will uh, uh, take down the regime in Eatria 
and uh, quite possibly we could see some sort of confederation between Eatria and the Tigray region, which would make for much more of a, a unified and stronger uh, state uh, if that were to happen. That would be uh, completely uh, different and, uh, and obviously uh, would change the dynamics of uh, the Horn of Africa if that were to occur. But I, I think it, at some point, uh, if we see the passing of uh, Isaiah Safwerki and the regime uh, implode upon itself in Eatria, uh, we, w- we would at some point see some sort of quite possibly of a unification between uh, Eatria uh, and Tigray. And uh, again, uh, I think that has uh, uh, a Biamed obviously greatly, greatly concerned right now. And uh, not only that, but he's probably more concerned locally with the OLA and its advances uh, that it, it has been making of, of recent date. Again, the OLA is expanding, getting bigger and bigger and stronger each day. And uh, there are active training camps where they're looking more like uh, what you would see in a uh, semi-professional military uh, as opposed of an insurgency force. Uh, in terms of the uh, of the way the OLA is growing and expanding and taking and holding areas. But uh, that's our report for today. We'll have more very, very soon. Have a good day, everybody.